Welcome to Data Structures and Applications subject. This is Dr. S. Nandagopalan. I'll be teaching one portion of module one called strings. So let me just switch over to the PPT and formally start the module one strings portion and uh, this particular subject has several topics and uh, my role of course is to start with this and subsequently module two also I'll be covering. So let us just uh, go through the syllabus for a moment. For instance, we have uh, module one in which strings is one particular chapter. So according to the syllabus of VTU, you can see that these are the topics that I will be covering. Basic terminology about strings, how to store strings in memory, and what are the kinds of operations we can do with strings. So these are uh, some of the basic ones, and once we understand these topics, then we can go into some of the pattern matching algorithms using the basic operations of strings. I'll also touch upon few programming examples for the word processing. Now the prescribed textbook for this particular topic called strings is nothing but the textbook two that is Shamshiris. Uh, so under this 3.1 to 3.3, 3.4 is uh, uh, left out, but I'll be just covering that as well. Similarly, 3.6 also is dropped, but I'll be again touching upon that. So basically 3.1 to 3.7 are the topics which we will be covering. And uh, I'll be just demonstrating some simple examples also to understand the concepts. Well, so we shall start the session and uh, these are the topics in this particular uh, two hours session, of course. So I'll be covering first hour as one uh, video and uh, second hour will be the rest of the topics. So we shall study about the basics of strings to start with an introduction. And then what are the terminologies used in strings irrespective of the language? For instance, you may use these strings for C language, C++, Java, Python, you know, so many languages. Strings, of course, uh, is being offered declaration or usage of strings across all languages, including PHP, HTML, web programming, you know, string without strings, of course, there is no uh, computer programming and uh, the general processing at all. So what we do is we will start with introduction and all these basics of strings or terminals are used and how to store these strings because here it may differ from language to language. For instance, if it is C language, we don't have actually a straightforward declaration like strings. But when you talk about uh, the, for instance, uh, languages like Java or C sharp, etc., uh, you can actually declare strings straight away. And uh, we also have the operations, say various types of operations like uh, length, how to find the length, how to find the substring, now how to find the index, etc. Now using these basic uh, string operations, we can also do a lot of uh, word processing work. So we also touch upon uh, or you will study few word processing applications of how exactly these fundamental string operations can be applied. And uh, once we get this simple word processing applications, then we can go through the pattern match. For example, when I say word processing, I, I may be given a string, you know, a, a source string or a text, and I may be given a pattern. Now I may want to search for that pattern and maybe replace with another string given. So something like that. So you can, you can uh, do a lot of uh, manipulations, etc. similar to Microsoft Word. You can search and replace kind of thing. And uh, 
We also have, apart from this, standard examples, we will also study some portion of the programming examples where we will just take few simple examples and see how we can build algorithms or program in order to do this string operations. Well, let me just start with this introduction to strings. Well, so we have this, let me make it more informal. So let it not be a, a regular kind of a classroom. Uh, so let me just start with what exactly a string means. Now a string is traditionally a sequence of characters. For example, I may say VTU, Vishweshwaraya Technological University. It has three words, no doubt about it. They are separated by space, that's a character. So when I put all of them together, I could call this as a string. A string consisting of several characters. And a string is generally considered as a data type. So this is a primitive data type. For example, in C, I could call it as declare a character because I cannot declare a string straight away, but I have to use an array for that. So for instance, I can simply say that in my C language, I can say char C, C-H-A-R, C semicolon. So I'm declaring a character variable, which is character is a data type. So I can store this variable, supposing it has a value, say C equal to, I mean, sorry, uh, C, yeah, C equals some value enclosed with single quote, for instance, say capital A, uppercase A. So this character having one byte of information is stored in the memory. So basically, this data type is offered as a primitive one by many languages. Similarly, I can declare a string in some other language. String may also denote more general arrays because in C, for instance, I can declare a set of characters, you know, which is nothing but a string, but that is being declared as an array, array of characters. Okay. So I will see a lot of examples for this. Now, typically strings are processed using several algorithms or routines. It may have built in. For example, if you take C again, you have string.h, which has so many functions, built in functions, which may be used for concatenation, which may be used for pattern matching, which may be used for indexing. So maybe you can find uh, tokens from this string token, we call it. So plenty of uh, functions are available in any given language. Right. So what are the uh, basic terminologies used. That means the syntax being used in several languages in general. In, in, in the programming point of view, a string is a text, basically, as we have just now seen. It may be a sequence of letters, like ASCII characters, we call it. It could com consist of <clears throat> alphabets, numbers, or Special characters like dollar, hash, star, open parent. So there are plenty of car question mark. So all these things put together, I could call it as a set of, uh, you know, characters forming a valid string, normally enclosed with double quote character, single character may be enclosed with the single quote in, in C language. Most of the places, most of the languages, we could follow this terminology. So for instance, VTU is enclosed with double quotes is a string set of characters with only alphabets. Now it can be mixed with uppercase as well as lowercase because uppercase is also a valid character. Lowercase is also a valid character. And similarly, this alphanumeric, you can have alphabets as well as numeric values like 3, 4, 0, 8, 1, you know, all that. You can have special characters like question mark, comma, uh, slash, double slash, you know, all that you can have. This is a valid URL, like so it's a string. It's a uh, what do you call a valid uh, email ID, but it is just uh, a set of characters. Validity checking, of course, is left to you. Depending upon the program. Continuing this, so we can just say that we can have a set of alphabets consisting of uppercase A to Z. And lowercase, I'm talking about only the English language characters. 
now uh, nowadays you can see that uh, there are a lot of other you know languages it could be chinese it could be japanese it could be kannada etc which can be used as sort of characters forming a string but we will talk about only english characters or alphabets digits 0 to 9 special characters all that you see on the keyboard of a laptop or a desktop so a finite sequence s of zero or more characters is called as a string it could be empty or a null also empty you know character string we can concatenate two strings it's an operation supposing if my first string is d and my second string is end i can use an operator here instead of using a function in some languages like c i may need to use a function in some other languages like java i can concatenate using plus so in c i may have to use string cat s t r c a t as a function give two strings you will get the concatenated one you can assign it to the left hand side variable so it all depends but what is the meaning of concatenation it is just nothing but combining the two strings so you can see here there is no gap in between or there is no space because t h e e n d so that is the literal meaning of these two strings so i have here the concatenation operator which is double uh, slash you know normal slash but in some languages it could be double vertical line or plus as i said earlier so it all depends but the meaning of concatenation is to join the two given strings now having understood that string can be stored with a set of characters enclosed with the double quote uh, maybe va varying from language to language how do we store it in memory so i i have a set of characters or a string being declared i need to store it because after storing only i can use these strings for processing purpose because it could be a word processing or it could be Uh, you know some other kind of processing which we use along with this uh, you know text for example i may want to count how many characters are there if you look at ms word you will also get this number of characters number of lines etc so that's one kind of information which we get from this apart from processing apart from manipulating it so you can delete you can add you can replace or uh, you can do whatever you know manipulations you, you can concatenate two files of strings all these kinds of uh, operations we can do but unless we store it we can't actually access them and then process them so how do we store it there are three ways what are the ways number 1 fixed length number 2 variable length but with some maximum it is like you can vary it but you can't exceed with the maximum length supposing if i declare 20 characters you know you can vary it it's a variable length so if i store only 10 characters though i have declared as 20 but only 10 will be used but you can't cross 20 another one is purely dynamic with uh, uh, whatever be the size you know the length you can have it that is through linked structures so there is no limit for this third one so this there is a limit always it is fixed this variable but with the maximum being declared here there is no such uh, limitations right so what is fixed length it's nothing but each line of print is viewed as a record where all records have the same length for example 80 characters is my width or the length of each record now that is fixed whether you store five characters or 10 characters or 79 characters always 80 character space is used for each record i think we will take an example in order to understand this concept of the meaning of fixed length so each line of print is viewed as a record for example record 0 now it has three fields this is first one this is second 
this is the third one let's say so these three put together three fields put together i may call it as one record so what is the width i could call this as a 80 characters you know 80 characters is my my next slide will show you you know this with the fixed length uh, how individual records and what is the width for each field etc so this is just to get an idea of the uh, basic uh, meaning of fixed length where each record you can see that it's not varying all records have this fixed length if this is 80 characters or n characters then every record will have this length only now even you can see here there are some you know uh, records where this particular second field has varying size but still this full record will have the same width okay let's now take this second example where let's assume that this record starts from address 200 so if the width of each record as i said earlier is 80 characters no 80 characters then this record will take irrespective of whatever the actual text you are storing will have 80 character and you can see here 200 to 279 that means totally 80 characters will be the first record so this is record number one this is record number two this is record number three and so on so what you have here is that the first record starting from 200 it will go up to 279 and the second record will always start from 280 irrespective of whether you have here meaningful text or not so every record you can see here it starts you know 80 characters 200 280 360 440 so you can see here that every record has a fixed length now what is the second okay before that we also see the advantages and disadvantages of this method of storing these strings what are the advantages ease of accessing data because we know that it always has 80 characters you can simply rely on that because those days people used to uh, manage this with uh, punched cards fortran 4 i think you would not have heard all these things but those days a fixed length record was uh, very famous and uh, ease of updating data because you know that it's only 80 characters you can easily scan through the records what are the disadvantages the disadvantages of course is that the time is wasted in reading when most characters are empty suppose i assume that i have only one character in one record let's say any record record there are 79 uh, you know uh, character space is wasted because the next record always starts at 80. So space, time, etc. all these are wasted. So certain records, suppose it's a wastage, but suppose I assume that a record requires more than 80 characters. What do we do? Then of course, you have to, you know, go to the second record, but second, rec I mean, next record. Next record, of course, is continuation of the previous one. How do you manage? So this is a headache. And similarly, during corrections, it may exceed the length because assume that I'm pushing some, you know, inserting some characters. It's already say 78 characters. Now I only space for two characters. Now what do I do? So it's not so easy. Again, you have to go beyond this 80 characters. So insertion, delete. I mean, I want to insert a new record in the middle. You have to push all the things down. Well, there are some uh, modif I mean, modifications which we can do uh, with this method for handling or for addressing these issues, like you can use pointers and still manage it. I think uh, uh, this slide shows how we could do that. Now, instead of storing this as it is, like in the previous case, I will just have the pointers at a small table where I will just have the pointers. That means the first location actually points to the first record. And supposing if I want to, you know, second uh, pointer points to the second record and so on, nth record, 
sorry, nth pointer points to the last record. Fine. Uh, oh, oh, what is the advantage here? Supposing if I want to add a new record, I just create a location here and then make it to point here. So I don't need to push things down, you know, the existing one. So there are a lot of uh, advantages, of course, uh, uh, by modifying this normal fixed length kind of thing into, uh, you know, pointer based. Coming to variable length now. Now, when a string occupies only beginning part of the memory location and we need not read the entire record because we can actually uh, designate the end of the actual string or a record by using what is known as a marker. This marker is also called as sentinel. Okay, this is the normal word being used. So this is called as a delimiter. That means between one record and the other, one string and the other, we can actually use this special character or a marker or a sentinel. In this case, let's take double dollar to indicate the end of the string, which means that we are not going to waste space. Next string starts after this. So when you process it, you know that once if I reach or once if I read double dollar, that means that it is end of the current string. Then the next string starts after that. Okay. Use a pointer with length of the string in each record. So this is another method where you are storing the length in some other pointer variable so that you know that the first string has a 10 characters length, second string may be 20. So it's a variable one, but not beyond a particular maximum being specified. So let's take an example to understand this concept. OK, so this is the first uh, remedy or first uh, method that is this one using a marker. So you can see here still the same like first method, but you can see it's not always like, uh, you know, full 80 characters. The first string starts from here goes up to here, end of this is double dollar. And you can see here the second starts from this. And in between these two, the sentinel is this. In between this and this, the sentinel or the marker is this. So you can see here the end of string is always specified with a special character. Now another uh, uh, you know, option or method being uh, explained earlier, was to use the length. For example, the first string 55 characters. So this can be stored in this pointer. This is less 18 characters and so on. So you can get this or read this value first and then browse through this string only for 55. You know that the first string is 55 characters length. So instead of markers, we are just storing the length of the string. So obviously we don't waste space. We can actually insert. I want to insert a new string after this dollar dollar. I can insert no problem. So processing becomes very easy and manipulation becomes easy because you know where it starts, where it ends, you know, all that information. The third one is called as linked storage. This you will be studying later in this subject called as linked list. Now the previous ones all require arrays, uh, basic arrays, which you have already studied in module one. And uh, this is different from array because here what we do is we dynamically create a node. So what is basically a linked list? Now I'll just give you a very simple, uh, you know, uh, meaning later you will study one complete module is there for this, right? So what is a linked list? Linked list is nothing but a list of nodes. They are joined using what is known as a pointer. That means, for instance, a node, this is a node. It consists of two compartments or two portions. The first one is called as information field. The second one is called as a next field or a pointer to the next node. 
Now, each node is stored in memory in some location. It need not be stored in a contiguous location. Compare this with arrays where array elements are stored in a contiguous location, one after the other. It is not spread out. Linked list is not like that. This node can be maybe stored at 100. This node may be stored at even 2000, but they have a logical connectivity. What is that connectivity? Through this linkage. So we know that by processing this node where the next node is, we know the third node where it is by knowing this next field. So the next field actually stores the address of the next node. So when they are linked like this, we can as well store our strings because it's a concatenation. String is nothing but a concatenation of so many characters. So it could be character or characters. For example, in this case, I have stored to be or not to be, you know, something like that. We have created a list of nodes, each node storing one character at a time. So I can insert any character in between. I can drop any character in between. You need to just delete the node and uh, there is no need for any fixed length that this because you can create as many nodes use it as you can like during runtime. So it's not advanced kind of declaration that I need only this much space and you fix 80 or 120 or 200 characters only. No, it's not like that. You it is indefinite you can say. Alternatively, we can also have <coughs> multiple characters in one uh, you know, node. So I can have fixed length here, three characters in each node maximum, but you could store one or two or three. You, you can decide how many other characters you want. For example, here three characters. I have stored number of nodes required may be less. Here the number of nodes required may be more because I am storing one character per node. So the advantage here is that we can actually store the string uh, in terms of single character in each node or multiple characters in each node where a lot of advantages and advantages are there. Disadvantages of course are very less. Now uh, coming to some of the basic concepts uh, formally, I can uh, uh, just say that uh, you know characters are uh, characterized by using what is known as ASCII, American Standard Code for Information Interchange, and uh, these are like you know alphabets, all that we have already seen. Character, it's a single alphabet or a numeric value or special character. Concatenation, we have already seen. Empty string is very important. Normally, we uh, you know specify the empty string something like this. It is nothing. And it also has some ASCII character value for empty. String, it is nothing but a textual value because what meaning is attached to a string is left to us. But as far as the system is concerned, a programming language is concerned, it is a set of characters. Literal string is nothing but explicitly in the code. I'll show you that in the examples. So it's not a variable, it doesn't change. Maybe some some fixed uh, kind of text values attached to this, which normally don't change when the execution is taking place. So that's where some of the languages like Java, etc., may say that strings may be mutable or not mutable. That means whether you can modify in memory or you cannot modify. Substring is an operation that means you just take a portion of the string. For example. Uh, see, I have Bangalore, B A N G A L O R E. So L O may be a substring. Unicode, Unicode is a standard system for representing text characters and symbols, but uh, you know this is a much higher level of representing the strings, where it could include uh, many other language characters as well, natural language characters. Right. What is the data type? <coughs> uh, I think C language you have already studied and uh, let me just uh, quickly bring in some of the uh, 
uh, you know, basic concepts of how the strings are declared in C language to start with a character declaration. So when I say char C, it is declaring a character variable. That means C is a character variable. And uh, how many bytes are stored? One byte because ASCII characters, normal one, it's seven bits, but uh, actual ASCII, like, you know, eight bits, extended ASCII, we call it. So one byte is the value. The Unicode characters may take two bytes, 32 bits, sorry, 16 bits. That is two bytes. <clears throat> Uh, may be the size, but when you talk about ASCII characters, we always say that eight bits or one byte. Because that means, uh, you know, 256, 0 to 255 can hold because eight bits. So I can I can address 256 characters, which is the ASCII character set, which I think you can see any textbook will give you the uh, you know, table. OK, so when you come to string, you can't declare. A string in C directly. I can't use a keyword like string. So instead, I need to declare and store the string in an array. For example, if I want to store a string with a maximum of 20 characters, you can see here still I use the data type called char. And this is the name of the variable, which is str, and the maximum is 20, which means that it can go from 0 to 19. At each place, at each location of str, I'll be storing one character. Okay, so this is how it is stored. For instance, it is it is implied that in C language, you know, whatever I have here, str, there's a variable, it is nothing but a pointer by itself. OK, it's a pointer by itself. So when I say str or str of. You know, as a character string, it doesn't matter. OK, I think you will study more about this in, in due course or you already studied in C language. Well, so in first location str of zero, this first character is stored. Similarly, one, two, etc. So totally six characters space only it is taking because maximum still we have 20. You can't cross 20. You'll get an error. And uh, the last one you can see here it is empty. So we'll see how to store in variable like as a literal string or you can store it character by character as well. So if I want to store a string called hello, normally strings are ended by an empty string called null character here. This is not two characters. Remember, it is a single character. OK, slash zero. OK, so this you already studied. I think uh, a lot waste more time on this. OK, so we can read the string and write uh, you in C language. For instance, you can use get as or scanf percentage yes. Both are, I mean, it has its own merits and demerits. OK, when I declare this, that means I get the space for this name. I can read up to 20 characters and uh, I can use uh, uh, get as or I can use scanf. Yes, yes means string is the data, is the format which is specified. And we don't use uh, ampersand here. Okay, now coming to put as. Okay, now we have, it's not character by character because I'm just using percentage yes, so I can directly read entire string. I don't require a for loop. Because if I want to read character by character, then I have to use a for loop and use ampersand here. I think this is all you have studied already. Similarly, writing onto the console, I can use put string name or I can use printer percentage s in order to print what I have read from the keyboard. So this is a very simple example uh, in order to read a name from the keyboard. You can see get s and put us. So this is the way by which we can actually. Uh, uh, you know, we can read and uh, write, you know, onto the console string. The same one, same thing, but I, I just use scanf and printf instead of get us and put us. 
uh, only scan up and print up are used, it will do the same job. And uh, yeah, this is very interesting. We have what is known as uh, string initialization. So uh, this is a, a string constant we can call it. Um, so what happens here is that you don't need to actually specify the size. How many characters? It doesn't matter because you are initializing the string at the time of declaration. So either you can do like this individual character. This is something like array initialization, whereas this one is a string initialization. So you can enclose this with double quote and automatically a null character is attached. And this variable now month is a character string having this characters M E or C H. So both are same. Only the way in which you are doing is different. Now you can also uh, declare a set of uh, you know strings and an array of strings each one having its own uh, you know length for example size that means i want to store a set of names not name now it is names i want to store student names let's say i want to store 10 student names so max is 10 right and what is the size of each student name that you can give it in the column? That means 20, let's take. So it becomes 10 by 20 array, right? A two dimensional array. I can store 10 names. Each name, it's a string of characters not exceeding 20 characters. If you want, you can declare more also. So max. It's each name. So name of zero, then column, that is this one, is zero to size minus one. Okay. Then, so Scott, yes, C O T T. Then this is wasted because the size is 20, let's say. And the next one is Kim. So this is only three characters. So this is again another name. Like this, I can store a set of names names of employees, names of students, names of cities, names of countries, anything. But because each name has its own length and I want to store multiple names with a single variable, so I can access names of two. What is names of two? This one, you know, Donald. Names of two is nothing but Donald. So I can access that. So this is the advantage of array of strings. So how to read and print uh, this one? Maximum number of names you can get it because I've just used max and size where max is 10 and 20. You can read that value at runtime. Okay, so enter the names. You need a for loop so you can read all the names. You can see here because names is a two dimensional array now. So every location of every array location now in the rows names of zero one name names of one another name and so on and you can print in a similar way so how to store uh, a set of uh, strings you know more than one string this is the way well now we will move on to what is known as string operations now onwards, we will actually go into bit of, you know, manipulating the strings because we have just said that, okay, we can declare strings, we can store strings, but we should get some advantage of it. How do we get the advantage? We have to process it. For processing, we need some kind of manipulation. Substring is one kind of operation. Indexing is another one concatenation and length. So what is substring? You extract a portion. But which portion? That is also specified as parameter to this. That means starting. So if I have this string. So starting from here. See starting from here to here only. So this is my substring. So this is my main string. I want only this much. So this index and starting and this index has to be specified. 
Supposing if this is 80 characters, let's take. So I can say 5 to 10, something like that. So what is indexing? Position of a given pattern in the string. So this is a pattern. If it is given, if it is there in the given text, then you can actually return the position. That is the this, this is the position value. Now supposing if the pattern is not there in the specified text, then of course you can return 0 or minus 1 or null, something like that. Concatenation is joining two strings. We have already seen it. Now length. Length is nothing but the number of characters in a given string. So that's very, very simple. Okay, now let us understand this with some examples. So how do we uh, explain the concept of substring? So let us first uh, understand the syntax or the function parameters, function name and term. So in general, see I'm not talking about any specific language here, right? Please be, uh, uh, you know, very important uh, point is that I'm not talking about any specific language. It's general. I may give you examples in C language, maybe end of each uh, function. So substring, you give the text where the substring is to be extracted, the initial, you know, position. See, I've explained in the previous slide, starting and ending uh, position, that is one way. In some other, uh, you know, way, we can also extract the substring like this. You give starting and also the length, how many characters, okay? So that's another form, so it, it depends. So according to our textbook, I'll just follow that. The syntax being used for substring extraction is this is the given string, starting position and how many characters you want to extract. Okay, so that is the thing. So let's understand this with an example. So this is a given string, to be or not to be. Now what is the substring to be extracted? Starting from four, total seven. For the moment, forget about C language, we will always assume that the string starts from position 1, okay, not 0. In C, it's 0, but in general, it is 1. So start at 4, that is 1, 2, 3, 4, that is this one. Sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll just erase this because space is also a character. Remember, space is also a character. So this is a space. Okay, I, I think I'll just add this with uh, yeah, blue color so that, see, this is a space. This is a space. This is, I'll just pick a pen so that the, yeah. So this is a space. This is a space. This is a space. This is a, we don't write normally that because it will be confusing. Yeah. So now we can actually calculate your yeah, fourth position. One, two, three, four. So this is four. Seven characters. So starting from here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven is this seven characters so starting from fourth position i want to extract all seven characters one two three four five six seven so b space war space n b e space war space n so this is correct so what is substring given the starting position extract the length whatever be the length now here we have the uh, what another example this is the given text and assume that i want 5 and 3 so you have 1 2 3 4 5 5 is s and three characters you can see this is three characters 
Okay. Yes, E R. So substring you can remember very easily starting position and the number of characters. Next, indexing. So you just given the text as one parameter and the pattern given. So pattern is checked. This is the string to be checked in this text. If it is found as I've already mentioned, it has to return the <coughs> sorry position. For example, D is a pattern. Remember the first occurrence of the pattern, not the subsequent occurrence. Right uh, here, uh, this pattern is it uh, existing here? I think there is some D yeah, here. Right? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think. Yeah, so that is result is seven. So we have this, we have the pattern which is found in this string. See, there is one more D. See, don't worry about this. This is a second occurrence. It won't return that. So we, I mean, index is a function, you know, in string where it searches this pattern in the given text and if the pattern is available it's found in the first occurrence is found then return the position one two three four five six seven let's take another example you have blank blank d where is it see dhe this is not having a blank so the complete one two three four five all these five characters are important so this is the one you know right so what is the position of this because it has left side blank right side blank one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen yeah it's correct so what we have here is the pattern being checked or you know, uh, scanned in the text. If it's found, find its index, find its position and return. I think there's another example where uh, the, the, the pattern is not there. It's a not found case. So it's not there in the given text. So what does it return? It may return zero or none. Okay, in this case is zero in general. In C language, it could be different. Okay, now let us uh, try this, uh, you know, substring operation in C language. C language does not have a direct substring function, but it has what is known as str str string searching or a pattern searching, and we can get it. I mean, similar or the same kind of. Uh, uh, you know, indexing of, sorry, this is not, uh, I mean, indexing operation, it can get it. Substring, uh, I'm not showing the example, but, uh, you know, I'm just showing an example for the indexing. So indexing is possible. A similar kind of function is available, but with a different name called str, str, but there are some issues here. Well, let me just explain that. So let's assume that we have uh, uh, a text, uh, you know, str. So it's another way of declaring a, a string constant. So it's a pointer or you can put a square bracket as we have already, you know, specified in the introductory kind of thing. And we also have, uh, you know, remember that this uh, str, str will actually return a character pointer, okay? And we'll see how to get the position. So we need to do some kind of uh, manipulation here. It's not a direct kind of uh, index function as we have seen here, where it directly returns an integer. Here it doesn't return an integer. So what we have here is a character pointer, which it returns. So his father is the processor. Now D is the pattern which is checked here. So if P is null, that means pattern is not formed. So when the pattern is not there in the text, then it returns null. Remember this, it is not zero. 
So if it is null, you can say pattern not found. Supposing if it is not null, then it returns that position. That's a character pointer. So I can actually get the index by dating the difference. That means str actually points here. And supposing if my p points here, which are the addresses, I can take the difference between these two, which will give me the position of this. Supposing if it is a 200 and this is at uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, say some 215, then 15 is the position. So by doing this arithmetic P minus STR, I can actually get the index. That means position of the pattern in the text. So bit of manipulation, extra work we need to do in order to get the functionality of index. Concatenation in uh, uh, general sense, we have already seen. So you are uh, given two strings and you can use double slash or you can use uh, a vertical line, you know, two vertical lines or you can use in C language a function. OK, so the two function, two strings are M-A-R-K T-W-A-I-N. So when I concatenate, I'll get a string again, which is a concatenated one. So I can put any number of such uh, operations like in between blank. You can see here there is a blank character. So it will concatenate even three strings. One could be literal and other two could be variables S1 and S2. OK, how do we do that in uh, C language? You have to use this string cat. STRCAT concatenation. So it returns a string, so I can directly do that. So I have two strings here, S1 and S2, Kia motors. I, you can see there is a blank I already have given. So when I see the output, you can see KIA space motors. So you can run this even in the online kind of C compiler, you will get this being executed. You don't require actually an ID or Turbo C kind of thing or Visual Studio and all that. Well, so how do we do string concatenation in C language? Use a function called string cat, S-T-R-C-A-T. Okay, the same thing now, I'm just showing it with the text portion so that you can copy and paste later on because this is an image actually. So for the benefit of the viewer, suppose you get a PBT from BTU, you can actually cut and paste or copy and paste and you will be able to get the program working. Next, length. So the length is nothing but the number of characters. For instance, MT is zero. This one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight characters is the length of the string. So it won't count the null character. Slash zero, it won't count. So leaving away that the actual characters, what is the length? So C language again, you can string length, you can get it. So I don't want to waste uh, much time for that. Next, we shall move on to what is known as the word processing. So what is word processing? We need to manipulate some of the operations here like you could insert a string in the middle of a text or you could delete a portion of the string like it could be a substring which is deleted uh, which means you can uh, search for a pattern then you can delete you can replace it with some other string so uh, that is search and replace you know pattern search and replace ms word is the best example okay so we have this uh, uh, you know, insertion operation where we can insert a given string in the middle of a given text and you can delete a portion of the string or you can replace it with a given string or, and also a given pattern. So you just search for a pattern and then replace it with some other string. So these are very, very common kind of operations, word processing operations which people normally carry out. So how do we understand these things 
we will just uh, start with insertion. So insertion is nothing but text, given text, position where it should be inserted, what string need to be inserted. For instance, supposing if I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G is the given text and I want to insert at third place. So this is one, this is two, this is three. Okay, third position. So this string, new string should come and sit starting from third. That means after AB, you can see here after AB, my string to be inserted will come, which is shown in red color. Okay, third position onwards. Same thing, sixth position onwards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sixth position, that is here. Sixth onwards, X, Y, Z. You can see here after E, X, Y, Z. So, we need to search first, I mean, go to this particular position given in the second parameter and then put this here and push this, you know, across. Okay, we can write a simple logic, you know, program in order to do all these things. But supposing after this, you know, there are so many strings, so many characters, uh, uh, in the given text, then we have to push all these things. This is, of course, a logic which can be used using a for loop, etc., etc. But we will try to use our fundamental knowledge of the uh, string uh, functions. What are the string functions we have already studied? We have studied about substring, we have studied about index, we have studied about length, concatenation, you know, all these kinds of string functions. Well, so now we can implement this very easily, this insertion process very easily by using this concept. How? Let us first pick the substring. So the logic is very simple. I'll just erase this so that. Okay. So from the text, okay, substring starting from one and the pattern. So I will I will assume that my sorry P is patch position. I don't uh, get confused. So the terminology which I'm using is the first letter here T P and yes. Okay. So what is T text? What is P? It's the position. What is S? Is the string to be inserted. So from this given text. Now, substring, we know that it will extract starting from this, this entire length. Okay, entire length. So, what essentially we are doing here is that from this minus one is nothing but two. That is two characters I will be just getting as a substring. What I am trying to do here is that I am trying to create or a splitting operation of this text based upon this position given. Now I should create a void here. That means I could split this. How do I split? 3 minus 1. That is two characters I should take. So this becomes a substring for me. I mean this becomes one substring for me. Next what I do? I will take the rest here. Okay, this portion. Now, when I take this, I can insert, that means concatenate with whatever the string I give, that is yes. So basically, I need, I'll be concatenating this first string, which is a substring of two characters. In other words, one less than the position given and starting from beginning. Remember, starting from beginning, one less than this and this one, second one is nothing but the actual string given to be inserted. What is the third one? The third one is nothing but the rest. So I should get this rest as a substring. So how do I get that? Starting from P, that is from third one up to end, up to end. So how to get the end? 
complete length of the text minus the position that means this much plus one. So basically in order to get this many characters as a substring, I simply use this formula. So the logic is that get this extracted as a substring, concatenate that with the given insert to be inserted string and extract or substring for the remaining characters. So that can be done very easily here. So this is the logic which 